Jeff Colvin is here. He is Fortune Magazine's senior editor at large. His new book considers the question, what makes someone truly great at what they do? The book is called Talent is Overrated, What Really Separates World-Class Performers from Everybody Else. I am pleased to have Jeff Colvin at this table for the first time. Welcome. Thank you, Chuck. It's great to have you here. Thank this you. book resonates for me and it has affected with a lot of people. Tell me how you got to the subject. Yeah and resulting in the book. Yeah, uh, it was very simple, really started a couple of years ago when a writer at Fortune, a friend of mine, stopped by my office and said, we're doing a special issue all about great performance, excellent performance, you wanna do anything? And I said, yeah, I do. I, I've got some feelings about it and I think I know some things, so I don't know what exactly, but I wanna do it. Well, when I began then working on it, I discovered that there's this body of research, scientific research, that I didn't really know about and that I found most people don't really know about into exactly this question. And when I got into it, I thought it was incredibly interesting and also extremely important. So anyway, I wrote this article. Wait, tell me what it was. It was the, uh, it was the research that said, what is the source of top-level, world-class performance. Is it a specific innate talent, an ability to do something in particular, like uh, sing a song, play tennis, sell cars, whatever it may be, that you are born with? And the research showed over and over that that just doesn't seem to be the explanation for why some people are so great. And it further said, what does seem to be the explanation is a particular type of hard work. Uh, not just regular hard work. Hmm. We all know lots of hard workers who are not, frankly, world class. But this particular type of hard work that the researchers called deliberate practice, which is a very, a very, a very specifically defined type of activity. And that that, pursued at sufficient length with enough intensity, really does seem to be what all the great performers in any field have in common. Is it also the fact that they start young? It's often the fact, uh, because the effects of this, the effects of the activity, the deliberate practice activity, are cumulative. So if you start young, you can accumulate more hours at any given age than the other people around you. In addition, if you start young, the research finds, there are parts of your brain that will actually be affected. The, your brain will develop differently. Uh, if you start playing the violin at an early age, the areas of your brain that control the fingers of your left hand actually take over more territory in your brain. Yeah. And mm. so, yes, yeah, starting it's, early it's is a, a big It's a little help. bit like if you lose one sense for whatever yeah. reason, yeah. the other sense will enlarge because well, it's demanded to perform more. That's exactly right. And it happens more, it can happen at any age, which is a, a, a recent finding. It used to be thought it couldn't. It can happen, you can have this effect at any age, but the effect is greater when you're a kid. Yeah. And sometimes people have said in, in your book and other books that, yeah. you know, it takes about 10 years to get That's really right. good at anything. That's right. You know, and 10 years of daily That's exactly right. practice of which hardly anything means more to you That's than learning more about the thing that you care about. That's exactly right. And in fact, the researchers call it the 10 year rule because after enough years of studying this, they found that it didn't matter what field they were looking at. It seemed to take at least 10 years of just what you say. This to get hard world class. To get world class. And in some fields, much more than that. Give me exhibit A yeah. for what we're talking about in terms of a human being. Okay. Um, a great example, I think, would be Tiger Woods. Right. Because when you first present this thesis, a lot of people will hear it, listen skeptically, and say, no, no, no. Tiger Woods could only be explained as someone with the most amazing natural gift in or the world. Or he had hand-eye coordination. Well, something or he had that's right. capacity to turn his body stronger than anybody else. Right, right. Okay, so we say, all right, let's look at the story closely. And of course, when you do, you find that he is, in fact, exhibit A, as you say, for this thesis. Uh, after all, his father put a golf club in his hands at the age of seven months. He was practicing regularly at the age of two. He had professional teachers from the age of four. 
So when he won the Masters at the age of 21, people thought it was amazing, and it was amazing. But we have to remember, he had been working hard, intensely, for 17 years under professional teachers. That's a sick, we underline professional teachers too, because at yeah. the core of what we're talking about, what you're talking about, yeah. you're, the credit is yours, it is deliberate practice. Yes. It is not simply because you go out there and you spend all those hours doing right. something. Right. It is because you have purpose, yes. plan, execution. You are focusing on something that is really critically important. It isn't just out there working. And organized. And organized. The practice has to be designed to make you, you know, one particular person better. And it has to be designed for this moment in your development to push you just beyond what you can currently do. Next week, the correct practice will be different because you will have advanced and a little bit. And it will have added to what you've already learned Precisely in the last right. week. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, it, what was amazing about golf, something yeah. I care about, yeah. it is that, I mean, you tell the story of Tiger Woods would go in and, and put his foot yeah. on a ball. Yeah, he'd drop him in it, the sand and step on it. In the sand trap and then step on it. Yeah. And bury the ball. Right. Not because he's going to see that shot a number of times, right. but he will see it at one point, That's and exactly he right. will have, have some, some sense yeah, that's right. He will have hit it just for that moment. He will have hit it 200 times. And so when the moment comes, he'll hit it beautifully. Whereas when you and I come upon that situation, we've never faced it before. And, yeah. and we'll we hit, hit the ball like that. And, and we hit the ball like that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. There's so much to apply here. But uh, someone in reviewing your book said, yeah. if you read nothing else, yeah. you know what's coming. Chapter 7. Yeah. Chapter 7 is applying the principles in our lives. Yes. Uh, give me yeah. that chapter as yeah. to why yeah. this is relevant to all of our lives yeah. today. Yeah. You know, a lot of people say to me, well, it's great for sports and right. music and stuff because you can practice. You can do it when it doesn't count. Right. But most of us work for a living. It always counts. We're supposed to be out there performing every day, right. all the time. You can't practice. Okay. You can still apply it. Uh, in a lot, first of all, some of what you do at work is directly practicable. Whether it's making a presentation or something, you can practice right. that. And you should. And you and should. And you should with de with dedication. Yeah. In a sense, and every aspect of it. Every aspect, and it will make a difference. And you may be the only person you know who's doing it, but it will make a huge difference. This is what all the best performers do. In addition to that, I mean, it's your book. In yeah. addition to that, yeah. in addition to that, if in fact you have practiced, yeah. then you are more able to be natural. Yes. So that instinct is as important. Practice will give you a finely tuned instinct. Yes, uh, that's exactly right. In other words, when we see the great performers, they seem to do it with such ease, so naturally that we think. They're just different from me, you know? Well, they are different, but they got that way. They weren't born that way. Now, what does this say about the idea? Well, chapter seven, let me stay with chapter yeah. seven. Here's yeah. the quote. This is from Inc. Magazine. Yes. If you read nothing else, chapter seven, applying the principles in our lives, presents more good ideas in 20 pages than many self-help books manage in 200. Among them, treat business news like case studies by carefully considering what you would do in the place of a struggling leader. Yes. Per periodically go back and practice the fundamental skills of your craft. For example, mm -hmm. analyze the ratios in a financial statement with right. pen and paper instead of software. Right. And constantly deepen your knowledge yes. of your industry. Yes, it's absolutely right. You know, one of the main findings in this, in this research, which sounds painfully obvious, but it isn't, is that understanding your business, deep knowledge about your company and your industry is critical. And when I say that isn't obvious, there are plenty of people in business who think that all you really need are management skills. If you are an ace manager, exactly. you can be dropped into any business mm -hmm. and work miracles. Well, the research is finding, and by the way, a lot of the best companies are finding also, are coming around to this. It ain't so. What you need is deep knowledge of what you're doing. And most companies are not very good at giving people this. They, they, you're expected to fend for yourself. Yeah. In fact, if you look at Silicon Valley, yeah. Google, yeah. run by three engineers. Yes. You know, right. Sergey and yeah. Larry, plus right. Eric Schmidt, right. who combines the, the engineering as well as you know, some management skills right. as well. But right. they all understand deep 
the technology. What does this say about people we think of as child prodigies? Great question, because this always comes up. What about child prodigies? You can play the piano incredibly right. at age right. five. It's very interesting. Mozart. Mozart. Well, I mean, Mozart is, is the, the greatest example of all. Uh, the story of Mozart is, in fact, remarkably parallel to the story of Tiger Woods. Uh, started by his father at an incredibly early age, intensive training in a particular field. Uh, like Tiger, he produced his first world-class work at the age of 21. In Mozart's case, it was a piano concerto. But he'd had 18 years of intensive training under an excellent teacher, namely his father. And so, in a way, it's hardly surprising that he was great at an early age. There is another book out there, and I recommend both of them. Malcolm Gladwell has yes. a book. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell has a gift for bestsellers. Yes, that's uh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we should yeah. all have yeah, this yeah, gift. Yeah. Um, but Malcolm says that you can also, success right. is also a product of hard work, yeah. determined and deliberate practice, but also circumstances that put right. you in a certain place at a certain time. Right. Where do you put that in your context? Yeah, in my context, that's what I refer to in the book as the supporting environment. And it's very important. Uh, it can be the environment in your family, uh, which actually turns out to be extremely important. Tiger Woods, Exhibit A. Exhibit A. Mozart, Exhibit B. A exhibit B. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Go ahead. Uh, but also the supporting environment in a larger sense. What kind uh, of schools you had a chance to go to? Well, there's that, but there's also just the, what's going on in the civilization around you at a particular moment. Mm. And that, that's important. That, that's absolutely a factor. Yeah, and Warren Buffett, for example, you know, yeah. has this great theory, which he, I think, calls the ovarian lottery. Yes. Where you were born can make a difference. Your of course chances it does. if you were born in the most underdeveloped place in the world, right. where there are no schools and right. no hardly electricity, right. and nutrition may not be perfect, right. the odds are much harder that's for right. you. And I think that's part of what Gladwell's thesis is. Yeah. Of course that's true. And what the, but what this affects is your chances of being able to pursue what's described here. In other words, your chances of being able to devote the time and effort to the years of deliberate practice necessary to become a great performer. Golfers do an amazing thing, uh, in which I characterize this as always going back to the well. Yeah. They continue to have golf instructors. Yes. Tiger Woods yes. went right. to Hank Haney because he was unhappy right. Right. with his stroke, right. with his swing. Right. He had already won the Masters twice. Yes. And almost every other tournament, yeah. This is possibly one, but he wasn't happy. Right. A fundamental thing. Right. It's a great example for all of us in every field. Okay. He continued to push himself beyond where he was, and of course, in his case, he was already at the absolute pinnacle. But that didn't matter. He was going to push himself beyond, and it's also important for all of us to realize that the world's greatest golfer still goes to a teacher. Okay, there yeah. is still value in having somebody else's perspective, somebody else's advice on how to develop yourself, no matter how good you are. So talk to me personally about you. I mean, yeah. in terms of, I mean, yeah. so you early yeah. on had access to these things. Yeah. Uh, I never knew about any of these studies. Yeah. And that's the reason this book was so interesting to me. I didn't yeah. know anything about this. It just right. was an instinctive thing that I had within me. Right. And secondly, I knew that everybody who came to this table, everybody, when I would ask them about achievement, would tell me about, maybe they would mention some God-given talent, but the essential thing that they all shared was a dedication to performance, right. a sense of hard work. It was the sort of Ben Hogan quality of life. Right. They all said, I work harder than anybody. That's I've never had a person come here and say, you are a lucky man, Charlie Rose, because you have just met the greatest talent in the history of surgery, right. or the greatest talent in the history of ballet, the greatest talent you know, ever to put their hands on, on a football. That's exactly right. And in fact, what you find is that some of the greatest achievers, the greatest performers, actually resent the idea that they were given a talent or a special gift for doing what they did, because that makes it sound easier than it really was for them. Sam Sneed said once that 
you know, of course, he was said to have had the most beautiful natural swing in golf. He, 